All right, so in today's video, we go from being, and by we, I mean me, go from being really excited about 2022 to <laughs> uh, a little less excited. Um, we broke some things, and by things, I mean like engine things and <laughs> suspension things and, and more things. So uh, let's just dive into it. All right, so this all started when I was installing the new clutch. Uh, I noticed that the headers were rubbing on the frame rails and there's like half an inch of clearance so that shouldn't be happening. So I assumed that the engine mounts were allowing too much movement and I was like, all right, we'll replace the engine mounts, get that out of the way. We're going into a new year, it's 2022. I wanna run the whole season, have a really great season. I don't wanna be dropping the K member in the middle of the year because you know they've fully failed or anything's wrong. So we dropped the K member to replace the motor mounts uh, both on the engine and the ones that are here on the K member. And at the same time, I was like, you know what I should do? I should pull the oil pan and make sure that the, the oil pickup tube is still in one piece. Cause I broke the one on the FP350S oil pan and pickup tube because the mount that went into the, you know, uh, the mount that went onto the stud uh, for that pickup tube I broke because of the or and by I I mean I think the the engine broke it with the vibrations at least that's what Ford performance believed um, it turned out to be a good thing because we found some surprises <laughs> and they're not good ones all right so first up we have the GT500 oil pan uh, here and you'll notice two things one the pickup tube um doesn't look so great. Uh, it broke the mount there, which is to be expected. Um, unfortunate, but expected. Um, and then secondly, <laughs> there is a unwanted thing in the bottom of the oil pan there. And if you're sitting there going, wow, you know, that kind of looks like a main stud, uh, you'd be right. So this was off of main cap, let's see. I believe this is six, right? If I can math correctly five. Oh, I got math um, so this is our main stud number five which is the one with the thrust bearing at the back right you know it's the last it's the last main cap and by stud I mean cap because I I know English language well but this guy here um, it was missing out of this one I believe yeah you can see it's nope it's missing out of that one we'll have to go back and look at pictures but it was missing entirely like it was just completely gone um, and so I, I was like, okay, so clearly we need to pull the main cap out and you know see how that looks and stuff. So we did. The crank looks fantastic. Uh, the main, the bearing not so great. I mean, it looks great outside that one gouge. Um, so I have a note out to the builder Tim, but I'm gonna assume that by the time I actually make this video, I'll have an answer and we're replacing the bearing. I will put a correction on the screen if not, but um, I think we're gonna be pulling the the motor out to to replace the bearings, but unfortunately, this really sucks because if we go under the car, I installed a brand new clutch. Um, clutch is great, never got to start the car, that's unfortunate, but I was really excited for this brand new, super lightweight racing clutch. Um, but that's red loctite in because this engine vibrates everything loose, point in case. And I was like, you know what? I really don't want a high RPM clutch coming out, especially now that it doesn't have the, the dual mass that the OEM one did. So I was like, I'm gonna red lock type that in. That's what spec recommends. I was like, this is a great idea. Damn it. So we're gonna have to pull that out and we're gonna pull the, you know, the, the engine out and open it up and inspect it. One of the things that concerns me about this bearing here is this to me is indicative that something went through it. This isn't like just wear, right? This is something a little piece of debris went through the bearing. So I've not pulled any of the others. It's such a bitch to get access to anything when the motor's in that uh, place. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and remove it entirely from the car and we'll put on engine stand where we can actually get access to stuff. But yeah, I wanna go ahead and pop them all off, look at everything, see what we're working with. But this to me is worrying that, you know, something went through and if that's the case, I wanna open up the oil pump and take a look at that and see, and see how that looks. So, I think next steps for me, oh, just to answer the question, I don't think these are bad. I can't say for sure. I mean, they're allowing a little bit of movement, but I don't know, to be honest, if this is in spec. They're definitely not trashed, right? They're not disintegrating. They might be allowing a little bit of movement, but this is just one of those times where, oh, that one moves a lot. Yeah, that's, that's way too much. 
This is why I always recommend to people when you have a, a gut feeling, heebie jeebies, or that little voice in the back of your head goes, you might want to put a little time into this. I recommend it. <laughs> I would have never known that this was an issue um, if I hadn't been willing to, I, I mean, I would have known eventually because something catastrophic probably would have happened, but I wouldn't have caught it in time if I hadn't been worried about the oil pickup tube. So definitely happy that I was willing to pull this apart and fix it. Good Lord though. I just, damn, I have some luck. I think we're a little tilted here. But anyway, so next steps. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the motor fully out of the car. Um, I actually have another video that on that, um, so I'm not gonna, and this one's already like half pulled out given the weird situation I'm in. But um, once again on an engine stand, then I'll pick the video back up and we'll start to, to dig into it. But my plan is not to do a full rebuild. The leak down test was good that I did two events ago. So that's like five-ish engine hours ago so it still should be good i mean we'll pull it apart and, and investigate it but i don't plan to do a refresh nothing to me outside of the obvious is cause for concern um but i guess the oil or the main stud falling out is more cause than this but anyway um nothing to me is cause for tear the whole engine apart and replace all the pieces send it to tim have it fully rebuilt um I'm hoping we can get away with just replacing the bearings and the timing components and new head gaskets, but we're gonna pull it apart um, to verify everything and, and really double check that you know we are in pretty good shape, but I fully expect it to be to be in good shape. So, and now that I think about it, those were probably famous last words. So anyway, let's see what happens next. Um, I'll pick you up when the motor's out. All right, so I got the oil pump here apart um, and off the motor. And you, if you look closely, you can see some marks there right in the center and some scrape marks. Definitely nothing like the first time I took a motor or I took an oil pump apart where this leading edge here was all chipped away and, and damaged from that first one. But it does to me, I would argue that this is more, a little more wear and tear than I would have expected. So I'm not surprised if that oil tube pickup when it broke apart and snap it allow you know and it, it rubbed on itself it, it broke some of the uh the little tiny pieces of steel that broke off of that then went through the motor because if we look in here too uh, it's, i don't know how the light's helping me here but there we go i think you can see it now you can see the little scrapes and stuff and they're, they're kind of all over here where there's surfaces a little tiny bit here on the edge a little bit through here all through there and this is probably the most heavily scraped spot is right there um, and then looking at the actual gear itself we can see that it also has some of those scrape marks so nothing this was not nearly as bad as the first time but definitely concerning um, and this is just another reason between the the fact that I've broken a couple pickup tubes um, I've had a couple um, oil pumps now score up on me. This is just another reason I think that a, a dry sump is the way to go. So looking here at the heads, um, some interesting things. Definitely looks like the fuel delivery and or spark is a little differently or is a little different in, in the individual heads here. We can see um, number eight. Let's see, is that number eight? Yeah, this is number eight and this is um, number four both of those are running a little bit rich which is good because we you know we want them to run a little cooler we don't want to lean them out but um this is the part that's more interesting to me where the exhaust valve or on the intake valves one is darker than the other um and the tuner thought that this might be related to uh the injectors i have not cleaned the oem injectors out um so that might be something I want to look into doing is uh, getting an injector cleaner and sending them through before we put the motor back together. Uh, fortunately, the head gaskets do look good, uh, or I should say the lines where the head gaskets go. No, none of the areas are blown out, indicating that you know combustion's going out of the chamber or water is going into the chamber or water's going into where the oil goes, whatever. There's no indication to me that we're having any issues here, at least that I was able to find on any of these so that's good news didn't expect it but just good to confirm it 
Interestingly, that does appear what I would say is a little bit more wear on the inside of these caps than I would have expected. Nothing's catching my fingernail in the sense of like, wow, that's huge. But it's also not buttery smooth. I mean, you can hear the, let me, let me turn this mic around and see if you can hear that. So it's definitely not as smooth as I would have expected. And you know, we kind of have the same thing here. So I think part of what I'm gonna do when I switch the cams out is I'm gonna, I'm gonna replace um, the caps too in addition to the cams just to give it a, you know, our best shot at smoothing things out. And if I come over here and I drop the head down, we can see that actually the journals on this side are much, much better. So it appears the wear has been exclusively on the top, or on the cap, which is interesting to me. I wouldn't have expected that, but yeah, it seems like the wear is on the cap and the cam itself, but not uh, in the part on the head. Outside of that, everything else looks really good. All the um, individual valve springs look good. The retainers look good. Um, I don't see any areas. I went and looked at all the all of these in depth to see if it, you know, any of them looked like they had parts of them chip off, because you know that was what you know ended up me tearing apart the motor originally, and I didn't see anything there. So happy with all that. One thing that was interesting is this is the secondary chain tensioner, and if we look here, you can see that I've worn through the guide for the top. Uh, we do have a little bit of wear on the guide for the bottom, but not a whole lot. And same thing on the other side, less wear, which is good. I don't know why I'm saying good, but good in the sense of, I guess, it was further from failure. But this is an interesting one. So the only change I made that I can think of that would have affected that is on the first version of the built motor, I ran I ran E85 probably about 70 to 80% of the time. I, essentially what I would do is I'd run um, a whole bunch of E85 and then the, like the last couple runs of the day I would switch to 100 octane so that I had 100 octane in the fuel tank and everything um, when the car was being stored. And a couple times I couldn't do that so I would just pull all the E85 out and dump, um, let's see, I'd dump uh, like 93 in or something just for storage. This version of the motor, I didn't do that at all. The car always had 100 or always had E85 in it. I think I ran 100 octane just long enough on the dyno to get a tune for it, but I definitely did not use it as the majority of what I used. So, or I, I never used it after that. I only think I only ran like two or three gallons, 100 octane through it, and then I just dumped a lot of E85 in. So, to me, that's the only thing I can think of that's different. And I've heard rumors online that that could be um, a result that E85 could have contributed to that wear, but I can't confirm that. I don't know enough. I don't know enough to confirm that that's what's going on. And I've definitely seen questionable claims from the company that claims that before. So I'm not making any statements, but definitely something I've sent that off to Ford Performance to see if they have any thoughts. They've shared it with the engineers and waiting a response. Taking a look here at the guides for the mains, you know, the, the primary chains here, and I don't see any indication of excessive wear. So there's, I mean, clearly there's the area where the, the chains have been rubbing, but they're, they're definitely not excessive. They're not nearly as indented. And as far as I understand, this is the same material as that secondary chain uh, guide up top. It might be different, but it appears to be the same material and it's not wearing the same way. So whatever was causing an issue there um, seems to be, or at least, yeah, so whatever was causing an issue with these secondary guides up top here um, was isolated to just the top because we weren't having the same issues below. All right, so another interesting thing here looking at the heads, I was, when I was pulling the, the uh, long tube headers off, I actually discovered that one of the bolts was missing. And I, if I remember correctly, it was this one. Um, and that allowed exhaust gases to leak past the gasket 
here and here. Both of these, I messed this one up with my finger a little bit because it's oily, but there, it was very clear that it was making it past the gasket just like this one is. So that was interesting to me. Um, clearly losing that bolt allowed the manifold to have just enough of a gap for the high pressure gases to leak past. So that's something to keep in mind and look for. I did not see it on that head, just on this side. All right, so taking a look here at the mains. See if I can get one of these out. Classic. All right, so taking a look at the mains here, we can see that the crank actually looks great. And the main bearings themselves look really good too. We have a couple uh, in various different stages. So that back one, like I showed you earlier in the beginning of the video, um, definitely looked a little more worn. It, uh, here we go, this one's popping out. They're generally all the same. So here we go, we have another one. So the mains look really, really good. Uh, this one has a tiny bit of wear right there where something might have been through it, just like that back one. But generally, they range from where number one is here, which is totally flawless, to um, just a little bit of a gouge in this one. Uh, or it's just a, like, just it's not even really a gouge. It just wore through that top layer. This one wore a little deeper, just barely enough to catch your fingernail, but generally, uh, they look pretty good. Nothing, no, the big thing that I was looking for is there's no excessive wear that's wearing off sections of that coating. Uh, we, as, as you can see, we have a couple areas where it looks like something went through. You know, as you can see, we definitely have an area where it looks like something went through, but um, you know, this one's clean, this one's clean, that one's got that tiny little gouge, this one's clean, and then this one's got the gouge that I showed you in the beginning. But essentially there's consistency Nothing that I was uh, super concerned about. Unfortunately, our deal breaker here is gonna be the crank. Um, as you can see, we, I don't know how well actually this is showing up, but we do have cracks. I will show some um, photos that are higher, higher resolution, but we do have cracks coming off both sides of the keyway. And interestingly, I don't see anything else. So it looks like it is limited to specifically just where the keyway is. There are a little bit of some scrapes here, but and maybe a potentially a little bit of more wear here than I would have expected. These little divots here are actually from uh, the first oil pump I had. We had some metal go through it and it just dinged it up a little bit. But unfortunately that's gonna be what's terminal for this. And that is definitely a no-go going forward. Definitely can't use this crank because at this point we're doomed to fail. All right, so I got the motor fully disassembled now. Taking a look at the um, the cylinders. I don't know how well this is showing up on screen because we're a little uh, oily still, but there's very, very, very little in here that's concerning. There are a couple areas. Let's see if I can get it on camera. Yeah, so you can see right there down the right side, there's a little bit of a scrape and stuff like that. Just a couple areas where it looks like the pistons might be scraping. There's a, there's one right there. Uh, not really able to get a good shot of it, but generally speaking, the, the combustion chambers look fantastic. Tons of hash still left, no major scrapes or gouges, no areas where the sleeves look like they're lifting or anything like that. So very, very happy with that. And then as far as the actual pistons themselves, uh, they look really good. This is number eight. So this is the one that you would expect to be the, the hottest, have the biggest issues. And it looks fantastic. I don't see any indication of overheating, it being cooked or anything like that, at least that I'm able to tell. Still got a decent amount of its coating. The rod bearings you'll see right there. They're not scraped. There's a little bit of the that top coating that is starting to worn off. You can see down here, the coating's a little more gray, where here it's starting to wear through a tiny bit. But generally speaking, they're all in really good shape. All right, so while the crank is bad news, at least the block in pistons and bearings and caps and rods and all that stuff looks really good. So there's a little bit of a, a silver lining there, although I have to be honest, I am stretching for it.
As the great philosopher J. Cole once said, ain't that some shit. <laughs> right. When I went into this, I really did not expect a broken crank. Um, I was really, really hoping we could just look at some bearings, verify everything was good, fabricate a new oil pickup tubes scenario, put it all back together, bolt it all back up, and be back out on the track by April. But unfortunately, that is most definitely not happening. Um, as far as next steps for this, uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do it right. You know, I've had a lot of conversations with folks over the past week while I've been filming this, and to me, it's, it's clear that we need to take that next step that pushes things quite a bit further ahead and not quite where I was anticipating going, you know, this year, maybe over the next couple years, but not this year. So I think what's next, we're going to drop in a cross-plane crank from the Illuminator. We're going to do some custom cross-plane crank, or yeah, cross-plane cams um, to take advantage of the lockouts. Definitely going to keep those, uh, you know, new piston rings, new bearings, the new timing components, and put the motor back together. But the big ones, we're going to dry sump it. I want to eliminate the, the issues I've been having with oil pickups. Um, I don't want to deal with any issues with oil pressure, and I would love to be able to pull vacuum on the crankcase to help keep the rings alive a little longer, give me a little better uh, reliability out of the motor. So not only will the cross plane help, but the dry sump will help. Uh, to do the dry sump correctly, we're going to need to remove the fuel tank and put in a fuel cell in the back due to where I want to put the, the dry sump tank for both weight distribution and kind of just ease of rooting and, you know, I want a big tank and all that kind of stuff. And then of course, if you're doing that, you might as well roll cage the car at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And there's some other things that'll sneak in there at the same time. So we definitely have a lot of stuff that we're doing. I don't know the timeline yet. I have no idea how long this is all going to take us, how long the car is going to be down. I just know that we're going to go ahead and we're going to start to convert to that real full race car, meaning roll cage and all that kind of stuff, fire suppression, dry sump, all that good stuff. Uh, and we're going to do it right. So in the meantime, I'll be making videos of, you know, kind of the various steps as we go through, as we, you know, rebuild the motor, as we roll cage the car, might do some seam welding, some stitch welding, stuff like that, um, as well as um, anytime I'm on track. So we do have the Miata that's been sitting in the backyard for a year while this thing's been getting all the attention. So we're definitely going to get the Miata back out on track, and then hopefully I can steal some rides in some friends' cars and stuff like that and keep things interesting. But... So in the middle of this video, I also recorded a step-by-step -step disassembly video for this that will be coming out after this video. So keep your eyes open for that if that's something you're interested in. Otherwise, let me know if you have any requests going forward as far as things you want to see on the car or see me tackle. Uh, let me know if you saw anything in this video that you're like, wow, dude, you totally missed that really obvious sign of something going horribly wrong. I wouldn't be surprised, so please let me know if you noticed that. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment in. Um, I'm happy to answer anything I can. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. And hopefully that next video is happier, because this one has been very sad and very costly. I don't think they're going to get cheaper going forward, but hopefully they'll get happier.